Martin Street. Welcome. Welcome, Martin Street. Right now, we want to give him praise, all honor and praise in Jesus' name. Can I have a hallelujah? Can I have a hallelujah? your home and join the family. Glorify his name and claim your victory. We want you to lift your hands, give God his praise, for he is worthy, he's worthy of all of our praise. We love him, we praise him, we love and glorify his name. Come join us, lift your voice of praise, to receive and claim your victory. To receive his grace and love and peace. It's the place to be. Come to Martin Street. To receive his grace and love and peace. We love him. We praise him. We love and glorify his name. Come join us. Lift your voice of praise. To receive and claim your victory, it's the place to be. It's the place to be. Come to Martin Street. To Martin Street. To receive His grace and love and peace. It's the place to be. Come to Martin Street. To receive His grace and love and peace. your voice of praise to receive and claim your victory. Well, good morning, church. 
Amen. Let us stand to our feet for our call to worship. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, Lord, we just thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. Oh, we thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning and see the dawning of a new day. Oh, Father God, we thank you for the liquid sunshine that has fell from the sky, Father, Father God, revitalizing the earth. And we just thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to assemble here in your house of prayer just one more time. And so now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that you're already here. So we ask that you would move amongst your people and move in a mighty, mighty way. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. We invite you to stand and sing along with our mass choir as they lead us into the presence of the Lord by saying, there is a name. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's stand. I love Jesus. Amen. While we're still standing, let us enjoy a moment of koinonia and fellowship with one another in the name of Jesus. Amen.
This is the season of Advent, and today, the first Sunday, we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent, so we want to call your attention to the podium now as Ms. Grave leads us in our Advent service. life. 
And because it is an evergreen, it stands for eternal life. Jesus gives us eternal life. His sparkling lights remind us of the bright light of the glory of the Lord, which shone on Bethlehem's hill the night that Jesus was born. His tapered shape points toward heaven, where Jesus will lead us someday. And at its very top shines a star to remind us that the shiny morning star is Jesus and that he is Jesus, the light of the world. stand with us as we sing Jesus light of the world Amen. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. We want to thank everyone for their participation in our Advent Reef service. 
And again, we want to welcome each and every one of you to Martin Street Baptist Church for our Sunday morning worship experience. We're just hallelujah glad that you decided to be with us. Those of you that are here in the sanctuary as well as those that are watching online, we just want you to know that we're just hallelujah glad that you decided to be here. Are there any visitors with us this Sunday morning? Any first time visitors with us? Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Again, on behalf of the officers and members of this great church, we just want you to know that we're just so glad that you decided to come and join with us on this Sunday morning. We know that there are a whole lot of churches you could have gone to and been really blessed this morning, but the fact that you decided to come this way means that you are a true blessing to us, and we invite you at any time to come back and worship with us here at Martin Street Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. It, this is coming up on a very busy season, so uh, indulge me for just a little while. We have quite a few announcements, but we always encourage you, make sure you're checking your email on Monday morning uh, for all of these announcements as they come across. We always start by asking that you would please pray for our sick and the shut-in. We do have some among us that would like to be able to get out and about, but the body would not allow them. So those of you who know that there is power in prayer, we ask that you would please pray for them so that in your time of need, somebody will pray for you. Amen? Amen. We also have bereavement uh, within our church family. We extend Christian sympathy again to the family of Brother Robert McCoy. Uh, please keep the family in prayer. Uh, the arrangements for his homegoing services uh, will be tomorrow, uh, December the 4th, right here at Martin Street. Uh, there will be a viewing from 11 to 11.30 a.m. and Then there will be visitation with the family from 11.30 to 12 noon, and the homegoing services will commence at 12 noon uh, tomorrow right here at Martin Street Baptist Church. So please keep the family lifted up in prayer. Amen? Uh, Christian sympathy also is extended to the Sanders family on the passing again of uh, uh, Sandra Sanders West, who is the daughter of uh, Sister Dorothy Sanders, Sister Stephanie Sanders. Uh, she was living in Oakland, California, but they are bringing her home uh, so that she will have her homegoing services here in Raleigh, North Carolina. The services will be this upcoming Friday, December the 8th, over at Haywood Funeral Home. There will be a visitation with the family from 11.30 to 12 noon, and then homegoing services will commence at 12 noon. So please uh, keep those families lifted up in prayer. Amen? As we speak of, uh, well, uh, today, uh, today there's a call to action for all uh, the community uh, in reference to the, uh, the killing that took place uh, uh, at S uh, Southeast Raleigh High School on this past week. Uh, two churches are hosting uh, events this afternoon. Uh, Word of God Fellowship, which is at 3000 Rock Quarry Road. There will be a gathering, uh, uh, there, there will be a discussion, and they are going to march from that church over to Southeast Raleigh High School where they will have a vigil in prayer today. And then at 4 p.m. at Macedonian New Life Church, there will also be a gathering, uh, a community discussion, uh, strategic planning on what uh, can be done to try to help uh, that community as well as those students at Southeast Raleigh High School. So please, uh, if you are able to make it, um, it is open to the community. The one at 1 o'clock is open to everybody, even um, the media. The one at 4 o'clock is open to everyone except the media. So those that are able, again, a call to action. I know many of our members live over in that area. So please, if you're able to make it, uh, they will greatly appreciate it. Amen? Uh, each Monday morning, again, we invite you to join us for our weekly prayer call. Uh, we thank Deacon Adrian Silve, who leads that for us on each Monday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, in order to join us, all you have to do is dial 727-731-2675. Uh, no pins, no passcodes. Just dial in. We'd love to have you to join us as we start our week off together in prayer. Uh, you don't have to be a member. Uh, you can just share that number with anybody, your friends, family, loved ones, co-workers. Uh, again, it's a way to come together and just call on the Lord as we start our week off in prayer. Amen? Out in the, um, in the uh, vestibule area, we have a tree of remembrance. If you'd like to add an ornament, uh, just however you like to make an ornament with your, your family name, your name, someone you would like to remember, we invite all the members of the church uh, to please do so. And when you come to the church, please just hang it onto the tree. We'll hold on to it. And next year, 
it'll already be there. So please, if you would like to have an ornament of remembrance for anyone, uh, please do so and just bring it whenever you come to church throughout the month of December. Amen? Again, um, uh, this is a call to all of our members. Uh, Wednesday, December the 13th at 7 p.m., we'll be having our end-of-the-year business meeting. Uh, those of you who know, this is when we present our budget for the upcoming year as well as our officer nominations uh, for the upcoming year. So we ask all of you who are able to attend, please, please try to mark your calendars to come out so that you can know what's going on and what's planned for the upcoming year at Martin Street Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. Our Christmas activity uh, play will take place on Sunday, December 17th at 6 p.m. Uh, there will be a rehearsal on that Saturday. Uh, I believe it's either at 10 uh, a.m. or 12 noon. Uh, please be on the lookout for that information. But we certainly want to invite everyone. Uh, we're getting back to doing this. We've been uh, kind of absent for a while with COVID, but it's our chance to come back. This has always been a big hit uh, with the community and everyone. So please mark your calendars and come out Sunday. December 17th at 6 p.m. for our Christmas nativity play. Amen? Amen. All right, uh, this sounds exciting. Uh, we will be hosting a Widows and Widowers Luncheon uh, on Thursday, December the 21st at 1 p.m. at Winston's Grill. Uh, that's over, I believe it's off of Falls of the News Road. Uh, it's, it's easy to know if you fall in this category. If you are a widower or a, uh, a widow, um, we want you to please come out uh, during this time. It could be a time uh, when your loved ones are gone, when you're by yourself. Well, we want you to know that your church family is thinking about you. Just a chance to come together and share some Christmas love with one another. If you would like to be a part of it, because there's no cost. There's no cost. All you got to do is call the church office and get your name on the list. Amen? And then show up at Winston's Grill Thursday, December 21st at 1 p.m., and you can enjoy a meal and a time of fellowship. So uh, please, please, count it not robbery uh, to come out and enjoy this time for our widows and widowers of the church. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and mark your calendars. Uh, we will be hosting our watch night celebration. Uh, our, our friends and families from over at First Baptist Church, uh, we will be coming over. Uh, those will have a worship service like we always do and the plan is to serve breakfast like they did for us on last year and so again um, I know you haven't made uh, watch night plans already so go ahead and plan to come to church we can't invite First Baptist down here and they're down here by themselves for watch night amen so they're, they're, um, uh, they, they have an interim pastor right now who will be bringing the word and their choir will be singing but we need to be here to welcome them when they get here. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Woo. All right. <laughs> Amen. Again, on behalf of all the officers and members of this church, we're always thankful and appreciative for your kind and generous support to Martin Street Baptist Church. As Paul said to the church in Galatia, sowing the right seed always brings the right harvest. And we want you to know whatever seed you have sown into Martin Street Baptist Church has been sown into good ground. And we do believe that in due season you will reap a right harvest. If you're in the building and you desire to make a donation throughout the worship service, we have collections plate over to my right on the State Street side, one in the rear and one in the annex building. Or you can make donations throughout the week by mailing in contributions to Martin Street Baptist Church, which is located at 1001 East Martin Street, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27601. Or if you're in the Raleigh area, you can drop off donations at the church office or the mailbox located outside the Charles Bullock Family Life Center, which is always accessible. If you do electronic giving, uh, you can use the Cash App application. If you put in dollar sign MSBC offering, 100% of those donations come directly to the church. Or you can go to our church website, which is www.martinstreetbaptist.org. There you will see the online giving tab, and there you will see multiple ways that you can give unto the Lord as the Lord has given unto us, remembering that God loveth a cheerful giver. And you are never more like God than when you give. And so we thank you for your kind and gracious contributions to Martin Street Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. And on a personal note, again, uh, I certainly want to thank all of you, those that knew that I was sick this week and reached out to me. It was a terrible, terrible week. Um, I, I was sick last week, as many of you saw, and on Monday, and I tried to press my way through. 
and pressing my way through kind of knocked me out. And I had severe laryngitis. I could not speak for several days this week. The doctor put me on a, a regiment uh, to get me back. I'm not 100%, and so they recommended that, if possible, I not preach uh, to give my, my voice and my body a chance to fully recover. So thank those for that reached out to me and, and were praying for me for my healing. Uh, we, uh, sometimes you try to do the right thing and you do it the wrong way. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have preached last week, but God is able. Amen? So thank you all for praying for me uh, and pray that God will continue to heal me so I can get back to preaching on next week. Amen. But we do have a preacher in the house. But right now, we're going to ask Deacon Preston McLean if he might come and lead us in our Sunday morning scripture and prayer. Amen? Amen. Good morning. Uh, with today being not only Communion Sunday, but the first Sunday of Advent, I have uh, two passages for us this morning. And so uh, the first passage will be from, taken from 1 Corinthians 10th chapter verses 16 and 17 and it reads the cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ yes. the bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ yes. and verse 17 for we being many are one bread and one body for we are all partakers of that one bread and then my second passage for this morning comes from Galatians 4th chapter verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. May the Lord add a blessing to his red word. And now let us bow for the morning prayer. Lord, we just want to say thank you for all of your many blessings, seen and unseen, that you bestow upon us each and every day. Lord, we pray for the sick and the shed-in, as well as those that may be bereaved due to the loss of a loved one. Lord, remind each of them that you will never leave nor forsake them. We pray for healing for our pastor, as we've heard this morning. Allow him to have the rest that he needs so that he can bring the word with fullness again sooner rather than later. And Lord, be with our choir as they sing the songs of Zion. Be with our ushers as they welcome each of us into this house of worship. And Lord, be with our guest minister as he brings forth the word from on high to give us the strength that we need for another week. And finally, Lord, we pray for all of those who were affected earlier this week at the events at Southeast Raleigh High School. Lord, we uh, ask a special prayer for the students, faculty, staff, administrators, family, and everyone else impacted by that event. Lord, be a healer and a way maker in the midst of this tragic incident. These and all things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Again, uh, God did provide a ram in the bush for us this Sunday morning by sending a preacher. And our, our guest preacher for today is the Reverend Samuel P. Robinson. Uh, he comes to us over at Watts Chapel. His biography tells us that he is the son of the late Samuel Robinson Jr. and the late Molly Gerald Robinson. He was born and raised in Proctorville, Lumberton, North Carolina. He was also educated in Proctorville and Lumberton City Schools. After high school, he was enrolled at North Carolina Central University. Go Eagles, huh? Amen. Where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in business administration in May 23, May 23rd, 1976. After college, Reverend Robinson uh, spent his vocational career in the business field, either as a manager or a business owner. He fulfilled his goal of business ownership in 1992 when he purchased the first of three businesses that he has owned. Uh, Reverend Robinson joined Watts Missionary, Watts Chapel Missionary Baptist Church in the mid-80s under the pastorate of Reverend Dr. Frank B. Weaver. He has served as various ministries at Watts Chapel, including the trustee ministry, the stewardship ministry, assistant treasurer, Sunday school teacher, and the music ministry. Since in a call to the Christian ministry, Reverend Robinson sought counsel from his pastor. After several years of prayer and preparation, his call to preach was announced to the Watts Chapel congregation in May of 2013 by his current pastor, the Reverend Dr. Harry L. White, Jr. Reverend Robinson preached his initial sermon on August the 30th, 2015. He earned a Master's of Arts degree in Christian Ministry with a concentration in homiletics from Liberty University Baptist Theological Seminary in May 14th, uh, 2016. And he was ordained by the Wake Missionary Baptist Association November 20th, 2016. In April of 2017, Reverend Robinson accepted the position as assistant to the senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Harry L. White, at Watts Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, where he continues to serve. Reverend Robinson is passionate about studying God's word, preaching the gospel, and leading others into a relationship with Jesus Christ. He is also passionate about teaching God's children how to manage the temple God has given them by eating God's way. Amen. And so again, we want to thank um, Reverend Robinson for being there and agreeing to come and bring us a word this morning. And I'm just confident that he will feed us in a way that we need to be fed this morning. So we ask you to prepare your hearts, pray with them, and pray for him. And after another selection from our mass choir, the next voice you will hear will be that of Reverend Samuel Robinson. Amen.
unto him, for he's holy. This morning, I'd like to first thank uh, Reverend Dr. Singleton for his invitation to come to share a word with you this morning from the Lord. There are many other preachers he could have called, but he extended that invitation to me, and I'm grateful. I'm always grateful, and I am delighted to see so many familiar faces. I'm not going to start calling names because I will overlook somebody and get in trouble, but it's, it's good to see familiar faces. I, I not only thank uh, uh, Reverend Singleton, but I honor your pastor emeritus, Reverend Bullock, and his wife. I, I, I've been in Raleigh since 1977, so I've visited, visited a number of churches, but I have been anchored in Watts Chapel since the mid-'80s, where I currently serve with the Reverend Dr. Harry O. White, Jr., and I bring you greetings from the Watts Chapel family. Uh, but I'm here on assignment this morning. And uh, that is my purpose. That is God's will. And if you'll pray with me and pray for me, I believe that there is a word from the Lord for us this morning. Uh, let us pray. Almighty God, it's preaching time. God, it's that time that we hear a word from you. God, I pray that you will hide me behind the cross, that I might not be seen, but you be seen and you be glorified. God, use my mouth, use my mind and my heart. Your spirit indwell me that your full word may go forth. And God, if that word is, this word is not for anyone else, it's for me. But I pray, God, that each and every one of us, when we leave this place as disciples of Jesus Christ, stronger and more dedicated to his service. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. And all God's people said amen. Amen and amen. This morning, our scripture will be coming from the Old Testament, the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, verses 7 through 16. Is, is your custom to stand? Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? 
As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord said. The God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away as did and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Now sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, what do you have against me? A man, a man of God, why did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on a bed, on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, have you brought tragedy even on this widow I am staying with by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house. He gave him to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. Amen. You may be seated. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. This morning I would like to use as a subject an unexpected assignment. An unexpected assignment. I'm here today on an unexpected assignment. But as a servant of the Lord, be ye also ready to preach the word of God in season and out of season. And therefore, when I received the call and the invitation, I said, yes. God Almighty is sovereign, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. God has a plan for the salvation of his people. It matters not how far man goes to sin. No matter how low he falls, how high, God has a plan for man's salvation. In our scripture text this morning, we meet a prophet by the name of Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe and Gilead, which was a land east of the Jordan River. Gilead was a land of inheritance for the children of Israel that was divided between the tribe of Gad and the tribe of Manasseh. We know nothing about Elijah except that he was a prophet of God from Gilead. His name means, my God, Jehovah, is he. In the first seven verses of this chapter, Elijah sort of drops in on the scene. No preparation, but he drops in 
to Israel and says to the king of Israel, who was Ahab, that there would be no rain, neither rain nor dew, except by the, his word of prayer. After Elijah had proclaimed this, God instructed him to go to the brook of Cherith, which was east of the Jordan also, and remain there. He was to drink from the brook, and God commanded the ravens to bring him bread and meat. And the, the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and in the evening. Now, when I read that and I did a little study, ravens bringing him bread and meat. Ravens were not clean food for the Israelites to eat. Yet, God commanded a raven to feed his servant. Now, that's a message in and of itself, but... This is our first insight as we glean from this text this morning. When serving God, your meal might come from unexpected places. Places you didn't plan on eating. Places you couldn't even get to to eat. But God commands and directs someone to feed his servants. You know, after a while, the brook dried up because... Again, there was no rain. So here's Elijah hiding in Cherith or just waiting, waiting until God instructs for his next instructions. And God steps in and commands him to go to Zarephath. Now, when I read this, Zarephath is in Sidon. And the Israelites were sinning by worshiping Baal, altars to Baal. And I find out that Sidon it was, was really the capital of Baal worship. They had manufacturing facilities there that made all sorts of things used in worshiping Baal. So why did God send him to Sidon? Had, a, had King Ahab ordered a discontinuance of Baal worship, maybe that assignment would have been complete. Rain would have returned. But he didn't. So Elijah travels to Zarephath where he is directed by a widow, to, is fed by a widow, now, you know, as I, as I looked at that, you know, modern technology enables you to, to do a research a lot quicker. And I asked the question, how far was it from Sharit, east of the Jordan, to Sidon? And it was 100 miles on foot. Not a bicycle, not a scooter. On foot, it was 100 miles. You know, so this is our second insight that I glean from this text is that servants of God may have to take a route that's far away from your comfort zone. You know, places you're familiar with, people you're familiar with. Elijah may have even asked himself, even though scripture doesn't tell us why Sidon, why, but that is God's plan. That is God's way of directing him. He, he was sending him there to be fed. One of the things that, that I gleaned while studying and preparing for this lesson is that to proclaim the word of God, one must be not only willing, but one must be patient. You know, God called Elijah for a purpose. And that waiting by that brook demonstrated patience. And his going to Sidon demonstrated obedience as well as patience. He may send you and I on unexpected assignments that we wonder, why is God asking me to do this? Why is he calling me to do this? I am professionally trained to do this, but here God is calling me to do something else. In our community, people's lives are often blessed 
by our obedience. Our obedience. An unexpected assignment. You didn't plan it, but you listened to God. And lives have been changed and lives have been enhanced. You know, during this COVID season, you've been doing an outstanding uh, job in ministry, the, the bag and a blessing once a month. There are lives that have been enhanced. Their homes with food, but the community, the interaction, the blessing that someone may receive that you know nothing about. The, the Bible contains many stories about women and widows when we consider this woman and this widow in, in Zarephath. And these stories often highlight the compassion and love that God has for all people, regardless of your social status, regardless of your gender, regardless of your education and your training. In the Old Testament, widows were often the most vulnerable members of society, especially if they had no male relative to help provide for them. And they were often forced to rely on charity just to survive. God commanded the Israelites to care for the widows and orphans, and the prophets frequently spoke out against those who oppressed them, those who oppressed the widows, the orphans, and the least of these. You know, oftentimes we look at sin that, that we, we believe and we gauge as sin, and the, God, and, and the Bible speaks of sin, but there's one sin that we often commit and that is committed, and that is the way we mistreat the least of these. The least of these. The widows, the orphans, and those who are continuously and frequently oppressed. When, when, I, when Elijah asked the, one, the widow for water to drink, he didn't expect her answer. You and I wouldn't have walked, you know, how would you have felt? Yeah, I've walked 100 miles. God said he's going to feed me. And she said, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got no bread. I'm just going to cook a few things for my son and I to prepare to die. But he, did I tell you that he was a man of faith? He asked her to bring him some bread along with the water first. And then fix some for yourself. You know, one thing that, that crossed my mind was the possibility of the look on her face. Do what? <laughs> fix you some. Now, I told you what I have and I don't have, but fix you some. Yet, she followed his instructions. And they ate. And they ate. But happiness soon turned to sadness because her son became ill. And there we see where she looked at Elijah and said, well, what did you do? Why did you come here? Did you come here to bring my sins to remembrance? I know I've sinned. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But her question was, is that why you came to kill my son? And Elijah, being a man of faith, asked her for his son, her son, and took him upstairs where he laid him on the bed and, and stretched out on him three times, praying to God. There is something about three before the resurrection. He prayed to God. And God gave him his life back. Now, the one thing that I, I, I share with you, the Bible does not tell us the woman's, the widow's name, nor the name of the son. We know of Elijah. Elijah was the, the main character in this story. Elijah was a prophet. Elijah was a man of God. Elijah was a man of faith. If you recall, God sent Elijah to Sidon to be fed by a widow. But in the process, he happened upon an unexpected assignment. 
And that assignment, first of all, was to feed the widow and her son. That reminds me over and over again that when God calls us to do something for others, there are times I've walked away thinking that I went to bless somebody else and I was blessed. You know, those unexpected assignments. Elijah was on an unexpected assignment in Sidon. That unexpected assignment, first of all, was to feed the widow and her son who now are beginning to believe even more in God's word. But then when the, the sadness, the illness of her son happens, she's now questioning, did you really come here to kill my son? And is, is that not just like us? We can leave here today. We can leave Bible study. We can get off the prayer call on Monday morning and let something happen. We flip just like a switch, turning the light off. Where is our faith? Where was her faith? Questioning Elijah, is that why you came? But the man of God took the son up to the upper room where he was staying, and he stretched forth his body on that young man and prayed out to God, and God brought life back to that young man's body. And he took him down to his mother and presented him and said, Your son lives. Your son lives. And my brothers and sisters, as I've learned as I've studied God's word, I don't know why God brought me to Elijah for this Sunday morning because he had really taken me to Elijah for another message at another time, at another place. But the one thing that rings out in this lesson is that unexpected assignment. And then that last part, that your son lives. You see, we look at Elijah, and Elijah was a tremendous prophet, one of only two people that didn't see death. And over in the New Testament, John the Baptist was considered the Elijah of the New Testament. But I stopped by here this morning. I, I wanted to tell you, and I wanted to introduce Elijah to you, but I want to leave with you a person that came after Elijah. Now, you might be reading the head and say, oh, you're talking about that other prophet. Oh, he was more than a prophet. I'm talking about that man of God, that king of kings, who happened to be the go by the name of Jesus. You see, I, Jesus came, and, that, and, and, and all that Elijah did, it all pointed to him. You know, I, I, I look at how he laid his body on that young boy for three times, three times. And each time he prayed out, and God delivered him. He lived again. And Jesus, the Son of God, came to as a redeemer of our sins. All that we have done, the punishment that we would do that we could not afford on our own, but Jesus came to deliver us and to be a perpetuation, a perpetuation for our sins, a substitute for us. Now, I don't know what you think about Elijah. I don't know what you think about the miracle of that son, but I'm going to tell you what I think. I think that all along, when I read God's word, there was preparation, as some say, preparation for the big outcome. And that big outcome was Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Now, I don't know what you call him, but you might call him our savior. You know, Paul wrote about him, he said, for therefore we are both laborers, and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially those that believe. Now, Jesus came for the Jews, right? We read about that. But there was an unexpected assignment, and that unexpected assignment was the Gentiles. You and I. 
We weren't born of a Jewish heritage, but he became our Savior. Job wrote about him and called him his Redeemer. He said, for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And over in John, John wrote about him. John called him the bread of life. He said, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. That reminds me of that widow in Zarephath. Bread, the drink. John also wrote about him and called him our Lord. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. He is the one that scriptures, the prophets wrote about. Isaiah called him the creator. He said, Hath thou not known, hath thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. I don't know what you call him, but Matthew wrote about him and called him the son of the living God. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. John wrote again and called him the only begotten son. Not one of them, but the only. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And then Luke wrote and said, he's the beloved son as well. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. My brothers and sisters, he's also the holy one of Israel, as the prophet Isaiah wrote about. He said, let the counsel of the holy one of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. We may know it for himself. And I heard this morning that they call him wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God. The everlasting father. The prince of peace. We're in that season of Advent. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called wonderful counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And finally, my brothers and sisters, he is the King of Kings. Which in these times, he shall be shown forth who is the blessed and only potentate. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. As Paul wrote those words to Timothy. What is his name? Jesus. What do you call him? Jesus, the Holy One, my Redeemer, my Savior. We have a Savior that we can call on morning, noon, or night. His name is Jesus. And if you don't know him, you need to know him for yourself. I don't care how old you go get. Sometimes we think back and we remember how our mamas and daddies used to pray. And how our grandmamas and our Sunday school teachers, you know, but... Life has a way, as Job said, I've heard about you, but now I've seen you for myself. That is the relationship we need. That widow in Zarephath didn't know about him, but she soon learned about the word of God and the prophet of God. As that bread and that water, that oil did not run dry until the rain came. Brothers and sisters, God was not finished with Elijah because one day Jesus Christ came. Jesus, the only begotten son, our Savior. And if you don't know him today, I invite you to get to know Jesus. You may have been coming to church. You could have been talked about. Told, you could, he, you, someone could tell you about him. But until you know him for yourself and you can call on Jesus for yourself, late in the midnight hour, pastor may not be available to answer the phone. He might not be able to talk. You got to be able to get up a word for yourself. 
That is what you were created to, to love God and adore him forever. Is there one this morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to come, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's as easy as one through three. Confess that you are a sinner. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead and then confess with your mouth that he is Lord of your life. Scripture says you will be saved. And then we are instructed to go forth. Don't fail to assemble ourselves together in worship, but go forth and be a witness. Tell others, but not only tell them, but do by being of good service. Let us pray. Almighty God, we truly thank you. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for the prophet Elijah. God, but we thank you for your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, who died for our sins and was raised on the third day that we might have eternal life. God, it is during this season of Advent that we remember his birth. God, make us truly thankful. Make us truly obedient. And God, most of all, give us a heart of love and compassion. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said amen, 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 amen. and amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. The preacher was <laughs> talking oftentimes when I think about that put it in a modern day context is as if you had five dollars left in your pocket and you were hungry and your ch your child was hungry and that's the, all you got was five dollars and I stopped by your house and told you can I get four of them because I need to feed myself and my family <laughs> your response is akin to her response <laughs> somebody asking for your last. So again, we thank God for those unexpected assignments that come up along the way. And we pray that you were blessed and that the Lord's blessing will continue to flow and feed each of us as we go forth. Amen. Amen. It is the first Sunday here at Martin Street Baptist Church. And on the first Sunday, it is our custom to observe the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. This is something that as a body of baptized believers, we are commanded to offer. It is not something that any person is commanded to receive. Those that do receive, the Lord does issue a warning. The Lord says in his word, before you eat of this bread or drink of this cup, make sure that you have a clean heart. Make sure that you renew a right spirit within you so that you can eat and drink worthily of the representation of his body and his blood. He said, because many don't take this serious and do what they're supposed to do, Many are weak and sickly among us, and many sleep. So now, before we eat of this bread, before we drink of this cup, let us look unto the Lord in prayer. Anybody need any supplies? Anyone? Anyone? Thank you, Deacon Silvey. Any, anyone in the annex need any? Y'all good. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity that you've given us to once again dine at your table. We thank you, Father God, for these elements that represent your body and your blood. And we pray now, Father God, that your Holy Spirit, your holy anointing, and your holy presence will fall down on each one of these elements. Anoint them, Father God, so that we might be anointed by them from the inside to the outside, and we might be transformed into the image of your Son. And so, Lord God, again, we do thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. For those that are able, we ask that you would stand and 
as we recite the Lord's Supper. As we read responsively, I will read the light and you will read the dark. Our words are on our screen and it says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. Amen. On that fateful night when the Lord had gathered his disciples in the upper room, he knew that his betrayer was right there amongst them. But even knowing that, he said to them that this bread represents my body, which shall be broken for you. And we know that he went to Calvary's cross and his body was broken, beaten, and battered for you and I. And he says, as often as you eat of this bread, you do show his death until he comes again. So let us take and break in remembrance of what he did for us. After they had eaten the bread, he then took the cup and he said to them that this cup represents the New Testament in my blood. He said that there is no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. Again, we know that he went to Calvary's cross and he shed his precious and his priceless blood for you and I, that we might have access to the tree of life. And he says, do ye this as often as ye can in remembrance of me. So let us take and drink in remembrance of him. Amen. Again, may the Lord bless each and every one of us. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you for everything that has been said and done here today. Father God, we thank you for this man of God who brought the word of God to the people of God today. And we just pray, Father God, that you would continue to use him, Father God, even for those unexpected assignments. We thank you, Father God, for the ministry of music today, Father God. We thank you for all the persons that participated in our Advent resurface. Again, Lord, we just thank you and praise you. And we pray that everything that was said and done here today was all for your glory and all for your good. And now unto him who's able to keep all of us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding ecstatic, overwhelming joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be dominion and power, both glory and majesty, this day, henceforth, and forevermore. And let us all sing together. <laughs> Amen, amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And remember, wherever you are in Raleigh, all roads lead to Martin Street.